Well, good morning. My name is James Westbrook. Uh, once again, I am the pastor here at the Realm Church right here in Oakland, California. I'm so glad that you can journey with us yet again for this series, a very important series titled Feeling Some Type of Way. Thus far, we have looked at anger and we have looked at hurt. For our third installment, we're going to look at lonely. And hopefully by the end of this, you will see and be convinced as I am why it is so important for us to pay attention to our internal worlds. When Jesus comes and says that I come that you may have life and have it more abundantly, my prayer is that you will see that a part of you having life more abundantly for this life and the one to come will be that we are able to live fully authentic selves under the freedom of the gospel where we can live out without fear, shame, and guilt and without all the other things that we use to hide from God that we can actually live from the inside out as opposed to simply focusing on the outside in where we only focus on the things on the outside and displaying faith and displaying trust and displaying full integration, knowing that we are fully fragmented on the inside. And so hopefully by the end of this, this series, you will be fully convinced as I am that God wants us to be fully integrated in Christ. And these are things that we need to be speaking to, paying attention to, so there won't be any big surprises in your life. And so as a pastor, I wanna say, focus, Pay attention to your internal world. And in this third installment, once again, we're going to talk about lonely, uh, loneliness. And before I, I set the scene uh, and set the tone for us in Psalm 42, because I want us to hear David's loneliness in Psalm 40, uh, 142. I want us to, uh, to, want to remind us of our time today. At, in the life of uh, Realm Church, we have a very unique uh, opportunity and a very unique time uh, to celebrate something that I believe that all Christians are called to do, uh, both individually as well as corporately. In the f uh, first century, when you look at the book of Acts, you see the church gathering all the resources and they are uh, giving to those that are in need uh, in that body. And that certainly is overlapping into the surrounding neighborhoods and surrounding communities. Today is the fourth Sunday of uh, the month. And so we have service Sunday uh, today. And so I thought that it would tie in very well for us to actually include that in the sermon. Dr. Brianna James, our director of Realm Initiative, she leads that for us. And she has wonderfully laid out for us uh, something that we can do in this uh, sermon as we are going to be doing this. And we're going to be praying for those in our city. And I want you, wherever you're watching this from, for you to be praying for your city. But I'm going to also ask you to pray for our city uh, as we lay out at the end of the sermon particular categories that we want you to pray for as you have people that are dealing with loneliness. And we want you to pray that God uh, meets them in a very special and obvious way and fulfilling that loneliness and that the church will get up and be dispatched in whatever way that God will have us during this pandemic, whatever way that makes sense for the church to do or what God will have us to do. I pray that we will go out and also be conduits of God's grace to them as well. So that's going to be a part. So this first part is going to be uh, a shorter part and then we're going to uh, pray and that will be um, uh, the completion of our time. So uh, without further ado, uh, let me go ahead and pray for us and I'll read Psalm 142 for us. Uh, Father, I want to just pray for our time right now. Lord, as I get ready to uh, preach about what your word has to say and, and what uh, truth, uh, your truth has to say about emotions and about lonely, what it means to be lonely, your response to it, I pray, God, that you would just cultivate those hearts, Lord. Cultivate our hearts, my heart, all of our hearts, that we may receive whatever you have for us today. Lord, I pray all of this in the name of Christ. And I pray, Lord, also for those that do not um, share the same beliefs as us in Jesus, those that are st still standing on the, the fence and looking over it and seeing what Christians believe, I pray for them as well. That they uh, see your design in their lives and what you mean and meant for them to have, what you want them to have and what they can only have in you because the heart is restless until it finds rest in thee. We pray all this in the name of Christ. Amen. 
Um, listen to these words by Psalm, uh, by David in Psalm 142. Uh, because this is um, service Sunday, we're not going to put a lot of words on the screen this Sunday. Uh, but I just want you just to sit under it and listen to it. Listen to what David writes when he's in a cave. He's writing a prayer for uh, all of Israel to sing at some point. He writes these words. He says, I cry aloud to the Lord. I lift up my voice to the Lord for mercy. I pour out before him my complaint. Before him I tell my trouble. When my spirit grows faint within me, it is you who watch over my way. In the path where I walk, people have hidden a snare for me. Look and see. There is no one at my right hand. No one is concerned for me. I have no refuge. No one cares for my life. I cry to you, Lord. I say, you are my refuge, my portion in the land of the living. Listen to my cry, for I am in desperate need. Rescue me from those who pursue me, for they are too strong for me. Set me from my prison that I may praise your name. Then the righteous, then the righteous will gather about me because of your goodness. Do you hear the loneliness that is oozing from the heart of David through the pen that David is writing with right now? Do you see the loneliness as he is inviting the, the, the reader and the singer, as he's inviting them to look at this and say, that, hey, look to my right and you won't find anyone there. Which is to say that, that the, the, the side that is positioned for those that are meant to support, those that are meant to anchor, there's no one there on my right side. I'm by myself. I feel alone. And he certainly does feel alone looking at the circumstances in his life. And I'm going to ask you the same question. Hey, do you feel alone in life right now? Have you felt lonely? Listen to this definition of loneliness. And as I, you're ready to read this definition of loneliness, I want us to wrap our minds around this illustration. I believe that when we're talking about the emotion of loneliness or to be lonely, we're talking about something that's sort of like carbon monoxide. See, carbon monoxide, you may not be aware of its presence, but when gone unchecked, it's extremely dangerous. As a matter of fact, it's deadly. Have you ever heard an alarm going off and then you ignored it? Or there are carbon monoxide alarms and you certainly shouldn't ignore that. And you certainly shouldn't ignore the alarms that go off within you that screaming out, I am lonely. And it, the reason why I believe that it's like carbon monoxide, because it's the emotion that usually goes ignored, unmentioned or unknown. And listen to this definition of loneliness. Loneliness is the emotion characterized by or causing a depressing feeling of being alone. It is the motion that says that at any given moment, I feel alone in this place, in this relationship, in my body, in this world. I feel alone. Loneliness says that I am unknown to this person, place or thing, or the person, place or thing are unknown to me. And I don't feel like people are with me or I feel like I'm by myself. Have you ever felt that? See, loneliness typically pushes us inward and we typically feel that no one knows us or we feel unknown and we don't feel particularly at home in that place. That is exactly what it means to be lonely, that I have something I'm experiencing right now in life that I feel unknown in and no one understands. That's lonely. According to uh, certain recent stats, at least as of 2019, 61% of Americans are lonely in uh, America. 61% of Americans are alone or feel lonely, and that's up 6% from the previous year in 2018. 
As a matter of fact, when you look at other polls in 2019, because we have all the numbers there, uh, what they noticed, they noticed something very uh, interesting. It says here that, that Gen Z is at 79% reporting that they feel lonely. Millennials, 71%. Gen X, 65%. Boomers, 50%. And then it continues to go down as generations get older. But what's interesting about that, as you get pressed into the younger generations, it's interesting. And by the way, a global pandemic doesn't help this. But what's interesting and stunning about this is that this is the most, literally the most interconnected generation or interconnected time that we've ever experienced in uh, the, the life of the world. There's never been a time other than the Garden of Eden where humanity had been more interconnected than now. However, stats demonstrate that we seem to be still the loneliest generation and the loneliest era that has ever lived on this earth. Wrap your mind around that. What great irony to have people that you can reach out to through interconnectedness and through technology and social media and media outlets, through people that are 13 hours away from here through a plane. Worlds away from us in different cultures, we can reach them through Facebook. We can reach them through a phone call, through a video conference, yet... But and yet, we are still the loneliest generation that has ever existed on the face of the earth. Think about that. And I, I think that, listen, whether on our jobs or in our homes or at our schools or in the marketplace or in this world, when we experience loneliness, even deep loneliness, I want to tell us today that we must address it or it will engulf us in its quiet cold space-like vacuum we have to address loneliness because loneliness is real and so i want us to quickly go over this and, and look at uh, just quickly three things here uh what it looks like to address our loneliness what it looks like to uh ignore our loneliness and in god's personal response to our loneliness so let's look at that right now uh, as we get ready uh before we pray for our uh service sunday activity today so, so let's look at one, addressing our loneliness. Don't forget that our series, Feeling Some Type of Way, is based on the assumption that the heart has hungers that's meant to be fulfilled. I mean, that the heart is going to communicate this hunger and it's meant to be fulfilled and they communicate it and our heart communicates, uh, communicates it through this thing that we call emotion. And since the beginning, our sin pulls us away from how we were made whole and perfect and known. Sin pulls us away from those things. Our bent natures pull us away from those things ever since Genesis chapter 3. Emotions is, is a way of actually communicating to us that, that hey, uh, this is not the way you were meant to be. Something is off here trying to put, pull us back into true north. That's what uh, emotions are meant to to do, or that's one of the purposes that they serve. This is one of the reasons why I believe that the emotions that I'm talking about here, that they are actually not needed and necessary uh, when you come, uh, when it comes to a pre-fall condition. Meaning that we were fully known by God and we were fully connected with God. As a result of the fall, you have these natural emotions that gonna, that's gonna arrive or arise out of that. And those emotions are Echoes are pulling to say that something is off here, which is why we ought to pay attention because it points to something that God has designed us to be. And emotions, when they're out of whack, is trying to give you a signal to say that, hey, something is going out of your design here. Something's wrong. You have to address it. And the same thing happens when we feel lonely. And I want to recognize something that many in Scripture before us recognize in their own lives as it pertains to addressing loneliness. And what is it that they recognize? Uh, one, they recognize their loneliness. And so there's two things I want us to look at uh, right now as we're addressing loneliness in our own life. You have to recognize your loneliness and you have to reach out in your loneliness. Those are two things that I want us to recognize here. One, I see that in Psalm 25, 16. And we certainly see that in Psalm 142 for the same reasons that I see it in Psalm 25. Look at these specific words that David writes here. 
He says, turn to me and be gracious to me, for I am lonely and afflicted. David says here that, look, I am lonely and afflicted, and thus he is recognizing the fact that he feels alone. He feels alone within his person, within his spirit. I feel alone in this body on this earth. You have to recognize your loneliness. You have to give words and give acknowledgement to it. And this is something that's so dangerous, like I said earlier, regarding carbon monoxide, because we typically don't address the feeling of loneliness in our life. We're not vulnerable enough. Can you say when you feel lonely that I am lonely? Have you, ha have you said that at all recently, that I am feeling lonely right now? particularly even amidst this global pandemic, has that even exaggerated the, the sense of loneliness that you're feeling? Have you said it? See, being known is about intimacy, and loneliness is where intimacy is not. Loneliness is, is, is this feeling that has evaded intimacy somehow. Loneliness is the opposite of being fully known. Loneliness is quite the opposite. See, can you acknowledge it? One, recognize your loneliness. David recognizes his loneliness by stating that I am lonely. And he listens to all of the alarms going off within him with his loneliness. And I would encourage you to do the same thing. One, two, you have to reach out in your loneliness. You can't stay there. I think that this is how people end up committing horrible acts to themselves. How people live these secret lives and, and, and escape lives. Things that you say, that how in the world did this happen? People are living unknown lives. And as a matter of fact, people feel unknown. And some of that has to do with cho deliberate choices, where it meaning that I am making choices and I don't want people to know. So I'm keep, keep, uh, keeping people out. That's a way of creating this sense of loneliness in our, in our lives. But also, there's sometimes where we step into something in this life, in our, in our environments, whether that's school, whether that's the place you shop, your home, uh, uh, your, the place you work, no matter where you go, the marketplace, you can feel lonely in that place. And sometimes loneliness is formed in the heart and is felt in the heart because you don't feel like you belong in those places. You feel like you're unknown in those places and you feel like you don't have intimacy in those places. When you feel that, it is important to recognize it, and it's also important to reach out when you feel it. Listen to uh, this, this question here. Do you declare yourself or distance yourself when you feel lonely? Do you declare yourself, meaning that you're willing to say that I do feel lonely and I'm reaching out for help regarding this loneliness that I feel, this coldness of existence. I feel alone in the universe. Is anybody hearing me or seeing me or understand me? Do you declare yourself in that or do you distance yourself when you feel lonely? See, sometimes we, we push more into ourselves and we say that nobody gets me, nobody understands me. And we live these lonely lives. And what I want to tell you is that, listen, you don't have to live like that. What they found in PTSD is that PTSD, uh, those that experience post-traumatic uh, stress disorder are some of the loneliest people in the world. Why? Because they have an experience that they feel marks them and they feel like no one understands them. In the book, Keep, uh, The Body Keeps Score, the person who actually is really responsible for coining this idea and this term PTSD, he discovered what, uh, what studying PT, um, excuse me, PTSD uh, Vietnam veterans, here's what he discovered, that they did not open up to him and they did not open up to people that did not share their experience. Thus, they felt so, so lonely. And loneliness can lead to great depression. What he discovered was that when they talked to one another, they talked and they could not stop talking because they had a shared experience and they felt known. Listen, I, I want to encourage us right now that, listen, when we feel lonely, 
even if you feel like you're experiencing something right now that no one understands, you have to declare yourself. You have to get into uh, some type of community, some type of relationship, a godly one where you can receive some godly counsel where they could hear you. But you have to be loving enough to yourself where you declare yourself and say that, listen, I'm feeling lonely and I need someone to hear from me. And whether that has to do with PTSD or whether that has to do with simply, I just feel lonely in this season, whatever the reason is, declare yourself. And I like what Tim, uh, what Chip Dodd has to say about this. Listen to what he says. Loneliness exposes pain because it expresses how much I need what I hunger for. You see there that loneliness, it exposes pain because it expresses how much I need what I hunger for. It's expressing this, this great need that God has, had actually hardwired and uh, wired into us that when we are lo uh, uh, lonely, we hunger for intimacy and we hunger to be known those places that are unknown, causing the loneliness. He goes on to say that loneliness renders us vulnerable to our hunger for emotional and spiritual fulfillment, thus exposing us to all relationship need. And so there we recognize there, and I, I appreciate what he has to say there. Why? Because it says something that's very true about loneliness. What? That we feel most vulnerable when we expose that loneliness. And I've said it for the last two weeks now, and now I'm going on three weeks, that God had made us to be known and seen people. And you cannot be fully spiritually mature emotionally mature without being vulnerable you have to be known and the only way to be known is not to be, succumb to fear shame and guilt because we're so worried about what people think about us find people and I, to I told you that's one of the reasons why I'm here as your pastor get some godly uh, community around you but people where you're able to be fully known one recognize your loneliness to reach out in your loneliness the second thing i want to see here is that the dangers of when uh, loneliness goes unaddressed and so real quickly i want to just look at our chart here again let's look at the chart and what you see here is that uh, when you see the truth of loneliness the truth is that you're going to feel lonely in this life that you may be experiencing loneliness in this life but look at the gift when we speak and when we declare ourselves in it when we recognize it see the gift that it offers when we actually address it is into me see sound familiar yes intimacy intimacy literally means and it translates as in terms of what it means for us and what it means for community it's into me see you get to see inside of me and i get to be my full self and if i can't be that with my wife and with my my uh, certain individuals that god has placed in my life if i can't be that with them i will be lonely and i will fall into depression as a matter of fact uh, beyond that i will actually even do something to myself and you to yourself. Why? Because God did not make you to be this shell that would hold or be this body that will hold the weight of loneliness. Into me, see, is the gift. And what need is it fulfilling? Is fulfilling the need of being known because God made you to be known. Head to the other side. Look at apathy and evil. What, why, how does that come about? Apathy comes about with loneliness because it's, it's an impaired view. Now there's an impairment of loneliness. You have, you've ignored it. Let's just give the scenario here, here. You've ignored it. You haven't addressed it. It's just growing in your heart. What happens? You stop feeling uh, this hope regarding the loneliness. The thing that God wants to give you is to run in intimacy toward him, toward him, and then also those that he's placed around you. No, instead, you get apathetic. Apathetic is actually the opposite of love. It's actually not hate. Hate takes passion and energy. The opposite of love is just, I don't care anymore. I don't action love you anymore. So you fall into this apathy, according to the best research on this and studying God's creation, you fall into apathy, and apathy is a very dangerous place to be when people ask, hey, how are you doing? Are you feeling lonely? Or how, how's your, your, your adjustments on your job at your school and this new place in this new town? We should be very careful when we say the words, nah, I'm okay. It's fine. 
See, apathy can show itself in a lot of ways, but just simply not caring anymore and not living out what God purposed for you to have through close intimate relationships leads to apathy when we're not living that reality out. Apathy and this impairment leads to isolation, further isolation, which leads to evil. You ever ask yourself, how in the world can people shoot up schools and do evil things and horrible things to people? How is that even possible? And then what you will find out about them when you do the research and when some of the, the content comes out over the news, you'll find out that people begin to say, yeah, that person was always by themselves. They seem to be separated from community, separated from people. And then you also have people and bullies that push people further away into this isolation because those people, they often don't feel wanted or they don't feel a part of or they don't feel like they belong. And some of that certainly has to do with mental sickness also ushering in this feeling of isolation. What I'm saying here is that God has a, has a bomb for this. And I want to get to that bomb right now as we get ready to pray. The bomb that God offers for this and this loneliness in order for us not to go to this impaired view of loneliness uh, or this impaired view uh, of loneliness or this isolated view of loneliness where, where it doesn't lead to apathy or evil is God has a response to our personal loneliness. And, and what is that? Uh, I, I see that in, in three ways. I see that through uh, God, through his own person, God uh, responds. Uh, he does it also through uh, his people. And then he, God also does it through his promises. And so let, let's look at that uh, for, for a second here. Uh, one, how does he do that through his own, own person? Well, God does it. Uh, we see that in scripture that God actually sends himself wrapped in human flesh. So God is three distinct persons. And the, uh, the second person of the Trinity is the son. And God sends his begot, only begotten son as this expression of God's love to us. And then listen to these things that God has to say that's very important from God to us as it pertains to why God sent this, uh, this beautiful expression of his love through his only begotten son. John 14, 18, listen to what Jesus says to his disciples as he is getting ready to leave uh, them for a short period and getting ready to go to the cross that he may die for human sin. John 14, 18 says this, I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Why is Jesus saying this? It's important for him uh, to let them know, one, that what's about to happen will not be the end. You are not alone. So Jesus is giving them assurance that the thing that he's about to do and the place that he's about to go will not lead to them being alone. But is it possible that Jesus is also saying this because they need to hear it? They feel discouraged. Is it possible that Jesus is saying this because they need to hear his reassuring words? Lord, are you about to leave me right now? You've literally come into my life and you've transformed everything. I've witnessed you do wonderful things, things that I cannot explain in my mind when I go to sleep at night. Wow, you are truly the Messiah, the long-awaited Messiah that's ushering in the new kingdom. Is it possible that Jesus says these words because they will be tempted to believe that they are left alone as orphans when he goes to the cross? I think absolutely, because Jesus sees them. They are known by Jesus. Jesus sees. In the same conversation, Jesus is going to say in John 14, 27, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. We're going to talk about fear um, in this series, but I want to say also see here that once again, Jesus is comforting their hearts because their hearts need comfort because the opposite of this is the sense of loneliness and that they're by themselves in the world, fending for themselves, trying to allow fate to are simply trying to allow chance to work out the details. The Jews certainly would have had a divine view of life. But that loneliness can certainly spew lies in your ears. And then we can sometimes believe that it's just up to chance. 
Listen to this assurance that Jesus even has for himself as he's declaring uh, to the Jesus is 100% man and 100% God. But look at Jesus stating in his humanity, appealing to the love of his father, his heavenly father. Listen to what he says. John 16, 32. Behold, the hour is coming. Indeed, it has come when you will be scattered each to his own home and will leave me alone. You're, you're, there's going to come a time and an hour where you're going to be scattered and you're going to leave me all by myself. The, the, the son of the living God, the Messiah, is stating here that you are going to leave me by myself, yet I am not alone. Why? For the Father is with me. It's a very important thing to not feel alone and to understand that you are not alone. Listen to the bomb that God is giving. He gives himself for that. He gives Jesus for that. Fourth, that we may not feel alone. For Christ, for Christ says that the Heavenly Father is with me. And, and even though you all are going to leave me, and I'm going to say this right now, that some of us have experienced uh, this, these experiences of abandonment in our lives, where people close to us, important to us, those that were supposed to be anchors around us, they left. Or they sent us on. Or we felt abandoned by them. And listen to me, Jesus is saying right here as he sees appealing to something that is true because there's a way in which abandonment and there's a way in which that type of rejection and the fear of that rejection can have us living lives as if no one wants you. You are wanted. You are loved. Do you hear what I'm saying here? God loves you. And Psalm 27 verse 10, uh, you have David himself that is actually wrestling with that type of experience where he felt abandoned, yet he holds on to the truth. When we have human experiences, we have, it, it skews our view of reality, but the gospel comes in and wants to actually clear our view of, of reality and what God actually has to say for our life. Look at what David says in Psalm 27 verse 10, for my father and my mother have forsaken me, but the Lord will take me in. You will forsake me, Jesus says, you will leave me alone, but I am not alone. That's the reality. That's the truth. That's gospel reality. But we also see that God is going to not only do this through his person, he's going to do this through his people, which means that God is going to provide you people in order to communicate to you that you're not alone. See, you're not alone because it's not you only. We see this in Hebrews. Hebrews tells us, uh, that in let us consider how to stir up one another to love in good works, not neglecting to meet together as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day drawing near. Now listen, this is very important for you not uh, to neglect meeting together because you need each other. You need each other for this thing, what, which is what? That you may stir one another up for good works and loving one another, inspiring one another to keep on loving on each other. He says you have to be with each other. God gives his people. You can't do it alone. Even if you feel alone, you can't do it alone. And I know you say that, we, we may say in our lives, and I've said this before, that you don't understand my experiences. I feel so alone. You won't get it. I won't even bother saying. Let me tell you something. You have no idea what people's stories are. You have no idea. And maybe it is time for you to move close to somebody one and, and trust the voice of God and begin to pray and see that God may be actually leading you to, you to someone to once again tell that story that you may get some freedom and you may find that that person may say that, wow, me too. God does it through his person. He does it through his people. And he also does it through his promises. And let's go, we want to end right here. Listen, that in God's word, we see over and over again, over a hundred times in both the Old Testament as well as the New Testament, these common phrases that you're going to hear over and over again. He's going to say words like what? I am with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Take courage. Why is it so important for God over and over again throughout the scriptures to tell us that he is with us? 
As a matter of fact, it's such a dominant theme from Yahweh in the Old Testament that when you see it in the New Testament, it really should uh, cause a light bulb to go off in our head and say, wow, they are actually um, echoing what Yahweh has promised and what Yahweh has said to his own people. Look at how this is true uh, through the prophet Isaiah to a people that felt alone. Isaiah 41 verse 10, fear not for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. He says, fear not. I am with you and I will help you. You are not alone, Israel, even though your situation looks quite dire. You also see it in Matthew 28 and 20 when God sends us on mission, which you'll see as a common um, a, a common theme throughout Scripture and a common practice is that when God sends his people on mission, he always gives this promise to them that he is with them. Praise the Lord for that. You see it with when there's a transference of power or a transference of leadership from Moses to Joshua, God is going to say that I am with you. You're going to see that when God gives um Jeremiah and the other prophets certain missions and God is going to tell Jeremiah listen this is going to be a long road and people are not going to listen to you and you have to give this news that you have judgment coming but I am with you and Jesus is even going to say that to his church when he's given the great commission on the second half of that great commission when he's sending us out to all the people groups of the nations and all the people groups of the world he's going to say that listen teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you and behold I am am with you always to the end of the age. Jesus, there it is again. He gives his promise when he sends us on mission. And I want to pray for you that this, this season right now, that this be a season of you reaching out, that you may be known, because not a single part of us should be unknown. Not a single part of us should be unknown. And mark my words, that whatever part of you is unknown is the part that you're going to feel most lonely in. That struggle, that stronghold, that suffering, the sin, the depression, the loneliness. You're going to feel lonely in those areas if you don't reach out. We're here. We love you. God loves you. God wants you to be known. Father, I pray for your church, that your church be a people that your church be a people in a place that people don't come to to hide, but they come to to be known. They come to live full lives where they are known and they are truly free. And they can truly flourish as humans where they're not bringing on other harms to themselves. Lord, we have so much hope planned for us. So much hope you want us to walk in and live in. And Lord, you comfort us. Let us not deny that comfort. Ah, uh, let us not deny your company. We pray all this in the name of Christ. Amen. All right, now it's time for us to pray. Uh, this is our the fourth Sunday of the month, so once again, this is our service Sunday, and uh, what we usually do is go out into the community and we serve. Uh, we do something where we serve uh, the body, or we do something uh, where we are going to stay stationary and we write and, and send things and gifts to uh, entities around us that the Lord has placed on our heart to give, and that is led by Dr. Brianna James, uh, the Director of Realm Initiatives. Uh, but today, uh, the Lord said on our heart, um, uh, through Dr. Uh, James, he said on our heart to pray uh, for those uh, that may be experiencing great loneliness. And this is the way that we're going to serve our brothers and sisters and going to serve our fellow neighbors around us. Uh, I believe that that prayer, uh, it, this is not a, um, a second tier option. This is the top option. As a matter of fact, everything that we do should start and be bathed in prayer. The scriptures tells us that the prayers of the righteous availeth much. It also tells us that God is waiting to hear the prayers of his people, that he may act on behalf of his people that pray. What a beautiful invitation that God invites his people, his covenantal people, to, to be a part of this this thing called prayer and answered prayers. And I praise God for that. 
And so we want to pray for some very specific things. And so even if you're not from uh, from Oakland or you're not um, you're watching from a different part of the world or a different part of the of the country, I want to inv- invite you one to pray for your city, the things that we're about to pray for, as well as uh, pray for Oakland. And so the way we're going to do this is that I'm going to put something on the screen. You're going to pray for that thing, and then um, and then we will move to the next one. But you're going to pray for it in your own homes with those believers that are with you, uh, wherever you are. So let's pray for the following. 